So we're going to do some vector questions in this video. These two questions here are from GCSE papers and this is from the A-level textbook. These questions are going to be quite different to regular uh, vector questions. You need to know a couple of things, uh, particularly to do with equating coefficients. I'll explain what that is in a second. And also pathfinding is what I've called it, which I'll also explain as I do it. We'll start with the A-level question. Um, so here's a parallelogram. And it's essentially asking you to prove that the, bi the diagonals of the parallelogram bisect each other. What that means is that um, it wants you to show that um, this diagonal here is split in half by this one and vice versa. So bisect means split in half. So essentially I'm trying to show that the length O to P is the same as the length P to B and, and likewise A to P and P to C. Now it's it suggested that I use vectors to do this by, by labeling this one as A and this one as C. I'm fine to do that and again I'm trying to show that this length is the same as this one and this length here is the same as this one over here. Um, and and that's, that would mean the, the diagonals bisect each other. Okay, so how do I do this? Well, what you do is you start by finding O to B in terms of vectors, and that's of course just going to be A plus C, because of course these vectors, um, if you find a, um, a parallel length that's the same, is also going to be that same vector, so this length here is C and this one is A, so therefore um, O to B is A plus C, so that's fine and easy. And now the first thing that we need to learn here to do these questions is that if you're looking at something like O to P, now O to P is, is the same, um, uh, is following the same line as O to B, which we just found, but it's just, it stops short, right? Like it's just some amount of that line we just found. And we can represent that algebraically by calling it some amount K of that thing. So all I'm saying is O to P is, 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 is some fraction of O to B because it's along the same line um, and it's going in the same direction, starts at the same place. So it's just some amount of that entire vector from up to the corner there. And, and, and K could be 0 0.4 here, it could be 0 0.5. I'm obviously hoping that it's 0 0.5 because if I could show later that K is 0 0.5, that means that this length is half of the whole thing, which is what I wanted to show in the first place. So we'll start with that, okay. And then we'll play exactly the same trick with A to C. Right, so we'll find the vector A to C, which is going to be minus A, because you're going backwards along this one, plus C. And now A to P is just some amount of that entire diagonal. So I'll call that some amount maybe R. It doesn't matter what letters you choose here. But it's some amount R of minus A plus C. Okay, and now to, 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 to do this, we're going to find, and, and this is why the uh, pathfinding is important, I've got one journey that represents O to P, and now I want to find another one. So what if I went via A? What if I went up to A and then down to P? All right, so, okay, that would be plus A, that, that would be this bit, A, and then I would do this bit, which I've just uh, described there. And that's going to be O to P, right? Because it doesn't, vectors don't care how you get somewhere, as long as you start in one place and in another, um, it's, it's always going to be the same. So, so we've got A plus this thing here is another representation for O to P. But again, those two things must be the same, right? The, the, the two journeys that I've got describing O to P just directly here via this thing here or via A, those two things must be the same. And so I can equate them as such. I can say literally this thing is equal to this other thing. Um, and, 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 and this brings us to our next bit, which is, okay, now that we've got this uh, equation here, I don't need the O to B bit, I'm just saying that these two things are both representing O to P. We can do this equating coefficients idea, whereby I've put all the vectors in bold because they're important, they're vectors. And everything that's part of an A vector over here must be the same as everything that's part of an A vector over here, and likewise for C. So on the left-hand side over here, I've got KAs. On the left-hand side, I've just got KAs. When you expand out, you just end up with KA. So I've just got K of them. On the right-hand side, I've got 1A here minus RAs here. And so K is equal to 1 minus R. Just expanding out in your head and then just comparing things that are attached to A's over here with things that are attached to A's over here. There's a 1 attached to this one here. And the C's, of course, you have KC's over here is equal to just RC's over here. So K is equal to R, which is good because, of course, remember, I want them to both equal a half to bisect this thing. So that's a good start. Anyway, this is just a similar equation. Um, you could substitute in R into K into there if you wanted to. Um, and then, of course, add K to both sides, divide by 2, and you get K as a half, which means R as a half, which means that, remember, K was saying how much of O to P, um, what were you had to times O to B by to get O to P. So, of course, what we're saying is this is now a half of the whole thing, which means it's split in half to get there. Uh, and likewise for, for this one here, because R is also a half. So we're done. We're done here. Um, so we, we achieved what we wanted to achieve. Okay, so this is going back to a GCSE question now because it's actually slightly harder than that A-level textbook question. Um, but we'll do the same thing, right? 
Um, so firstly, it just leads us into express f to e, or label the things they want. So c to d is a in that direction, d to e uh, is b in this direction, uh, and then f to c is a minus b up here. Um, so there's a few things we can work out there. It, it tells us to work out f to e, so we just go all the way around. Um, a plus a is 2a, b uh, minus b plus b is nothing, so that's just going to be 2a. Um, so that's cool. And, and now it's talking about um, some ratio from... Uh, f to x to x to m. Now I'm going to ignore the ratio a bit because it's easier just honestly to do that and just say okay well f to m, let's start there, f to m, um, if I first split up this b into a half b and a half b because it tells me m is the midpoint I can do that and now I can find that f to m is this plus this plus this. I, I could of course have gone around this way um, which would have actually been slightly quicker because of course eventually I'm going to end up with this which you can immediately see if you go around this way but I chose to go around this way it doesn't obviously it obviously makes the same thing that's the whole point of vectors and we get this and now f to x play exactly the same trick in the previous question f to x is just some amount of that so let's call it k or r amount of that um, again the, the choice of letter is irrelevant but that's f to x and now it tells me that cxc is a straight line so okay, that's useful to know. Now I can find c to e. It's just going to be a minus b plus 2a, or a plus a half b plus a half b. Either way, you're going to get a plus b. And exactly the same trick here says that c to x is some amount of this. You can call it k, um, because I just used k and r again. c to x is k amount of a plus b. It's just some amount of this straight line here. Um, and now, okay, again, two journeys. Let's find two journeys from f to x. We already have one. It's just some amount of this whole line. Um, and another would be to go up via c and down again. And we know both of those bits, right? Because we know this is just a minus b, and we know this now, c to x, is this. So I can find uh, f to x in an alternate way is just that plus that, which is this. Um, and now I've got two journeys for f to x, and they must be equal because it's because they're doing the same thing. So this thing here must be equal to this thing here. And now we come to the comparing coefficients bit. All right, so now we say on this side, we've got two r a's. And on this side, we have 1 here plus k there. So we have 2r equals 1 plus k. And in terms of the b's, uh, we have minus a half r b's on the left is equal to minus 1 plus k on the right when we expand that out. And again, this is just a simultaneous equation for us to solve. Um, I, I think, yeah, I just put this one here and, and maybe take them away because that goes with the k's. Yeah, that's what I did. Um, this minus this is uh, minus minus makes plus. So that's 5 over 2r, and this is 1 minus minus makes 2 times by 2, uh, divide by 5, and we get r is 4 fifths. Now remember, r was saying how much of, uh, which vector was it? r was saying how much of this vector we had here. So r is apparently 4 fifths, I just found out. So this is 4 fifths of the whole thing. And that's super useful to know, because if that's 4 fifths of the whole thing, that must be 1 fifth. And so the ratio is 4 to 5. 4 fifths to 1 fifth, ratio 4, sorry, 4 to 1. 4 fifths to 1 fifth, 4 to 1, n is just going to be 4. So I ignored this whole thing. You can set this up with algebra, like saying n over n plus 1, because that's still much easier to not do that. Much easier to ignore it right into the end and then just make it fit. Um, so let's do another one. This is from 2018, it looks like. Um, so okay, let's label the vectors that they want us to. Um, I would recommend at this point that you try this one on your own. It's just the same idea. Um, so the key thing is to label every can. Find every vector that you can easily. Then when you're stuck, start labeling stuff with R's and K's. Find two journeys for the same thing. Um, and then equate some coefficients. That's the general idea. Um, I would suggest that you try it now. Otherwise, let's make a start. So what's to tell us? M is the midpoint. That's useful to note because A to B is going to be minus A plus B. But M is the midpoint. So I can split that into a half on both of them there and a half both of them here. I don't know whether I bothered. No, I just need this one, don't I? Because I can say O to M is A plus this. Um, which is going to be uh, half a plus half b because you've got a minus half a there, um, and so and so at this point I can say, uh, oh, it's it's actually splitting. What ratio is giving me? O to p to p to m. Oh, that's interesting. So O to m is 0.5a plus 0.5b, and it's split with p. I know the ratio here. That's interesting. It's three to two. So I can divide this by five and then times it by three, and I get O to p. And I could times it by two and I would get p to m. But I don't think I need p to m. I think using O to P, I can find out, therefore, what A to P is. Um, A to P is um, minus A plus that 0 0.3, 0 0.3 thing, which I just found, which is going to be uh, this. So that's A to P. 
and now okay what are we looking for ratio o to n to n to o, o to b so if i could find o to n that would be the most useful thing so okay let's try and think of two so so firstly this is just b right so i could just represent o to n as kb and, and hope to find k later that would be super useful um, but i could also i think i now have enough to find another route from o to n which would be well i could either go along here and then down here or i could go right up to the top and then down again it's not going to make a difference which i do let's go all the way to the top let's say up to a is going to be um a plus some amount of a to p but some extra amount right which I, i'm also allowed to do and i think i did it this way just to show you that you're allowed to do this um this alternate route to, to n from o I, i've got one route here which is just some amount of this whole thing b but the alternate route is a plus some amount of a to n um, which i can just call r some amount of a to p sorry which i can just call r but r i'm now saying is bigger than one so in the previous examples i said that that r was just like a half or 0.6 or 0.4 whatever we had in the previous question but actually you can make r a, a number bigger than one and extend your vector out to make it longer right so i know the vector a to p is is this thing here but i'm allowed to times that by some bigger number to make it a bit longer to get to where i need to go so that's useful to know um, but now i have two descriptions for o to n so I, i'm pretty much done here i'll set those equal to each other um, and then i'll start comparing some coefficients so um we've got um, zero a's over here which is interesting equals one minus 0.7 r um, so that's what i've got from the a's and then the b's i've got k over here equals 0.3 r over here um, of course we can just solve this one because it only has r's in it so r is 10 over 7 and plugging that into there 0.3 is obviously 3 over 10 i could have used fractions for this whole thing but i think i didn't probably just because they're more annoying to type in 10s cancel and you get 3 over 7 um, and so k is 3 over 7 so that's really good because now I know this is three sevenths of the whole thing, which makes this uh, four sevenths of the whole thing because, of course, the whole thing has to add up to one of them. But of course, that gives me a ratio of three to four, and we're done here. I um, hope that was nice and clear, and, uh, and thank you for watching.